Here's a tutorial on converting vintage public domain free vintage images to images and graphics we can work with on t-shirts in Adobe Photoshop. And what we need to do is that most of these images, if you do a search in Google for public domain vintage clip art or public domain vintage images, you find any number of grayscale photographs and hand-drawn illustrations. So we can see that this design that's on this t-shirt, which we'll create here in a matter of minutes, is very much in keeping with what's trendy today, what's in fashion, this hand-drawn vintage look. And there's a lot of images that we can work with out there. Not only can we convert these into full designs, but we can pull elements. For instance, I could pull the Joker out of this particular image and use him with some text and create an entirely different type of design, but yet have a very detailed, hand-drawn, vintage look and create a very nice t-shirt or design. But what we want to be able to do is to knock the white out of our grayscale images so that we can use them and start to paint behind them and work with them in Photoshop. And we'll take a look at this image here as just a grayscale, the way that we um, loaded it into Photoshop. And what we'll want to do is create an action to knock the white out of the background. So we'll have an action in Photoshop that we can process these images very quickly and go ahead and set up our vintage t-shirt designs in minutes and use our actions to do that. So we're going to create an action and to do that we'll need to bring up our actions panel which you can see here now if you need to see that if you go to view excuse me window and click on actions you'll be able to bring that up. Now once that panel is open there's a little arrow over here to the right. If you click on this you can select new action. Now what I want to do is click on that and then I'm going to create a new action and I'm going to call it white out. And then we'll go ahead and click on record. Now once this is recording, you'll notice that everything we do will show up here in the actions panel. We're recording all of these steps that we use to knock the white out. So we've got our RGB image here. The first thing we do is we go image and mode and select grayscale. And we're going to discard our information. Now before I start running my whiteout action, I would make image adjustments. I'd adjust my tone curve or things like that to clean this image up a little bit and prep it for printing and design work. But for creating an action, I don't want to do that because some images I might not need to adjust the tone curve on or fix. I just want to take the whiteout. But before I took the whiteout, I would have made adjustments in my tone curves and cleaned up the image a little bit. The next step is that I've gone to convert to grayscale. The next step is to go to image and image size and bring the resolution up very high and I'll go to 900 dpi very high and select OK and that's because I'm gonna run a blur here in a minute now once my image is set up at that high resolution I'll go to image and mode and select bitmap 900 and select diffusion dither as my method and select OK now you can see what we've got here is we've got only black and white in our images now there's some peripheral data here. I would have dealt with that in, with my tone curve or my brightness, contrast, and intensity are going around touching the image up a little bit. For the tutorial, I'm not going to bother with that right now. The next step is, to, if you know, if you look here at selection, you'll see that I can't get select color range. So what I want to do is I want to go to image and mode and go back to a grayscale and select the size ratio of one and select OK. Then we'll go to select color range click on the white and select OK. Now what I want to do is I want to keep a copy of this in the background just so that I've got it if I need to make some adjustments or changes to it or if I need to knock something out. So I'm going to keep a copy of this because keeping a copy in the background if I need to fix something after I run it I can delete the one that I create with my action and go back to my background image and tweak it. So I'm going to right click and go to duplicate layer and I'll select OK I'm going to turn the background off and now I'm just going to hit my delete key with my copy selected and you can see now I've knocked out all of my weight. We'll go to select, deselect. As you can see there, now I've just got this black and white. The next step is to go to filter and blur and we'll go to Gaussian blur. And about two pixels or so, as you can see there in radius. And that gets rid of the choppy squares that I had when I had just black and white and select OK. And then now what I'll do is I'll come down here and click on stop recording and you'll notice that Photoshop in the actions panel recorded all of that for me. Now I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and we'll click view on screen here. You can see now I've got that all knocked out of the background. Now if I had problems with this then I could always go back to my background copy, make adjustments 
and run my script again. So by having that background copy, I've got that there. It's also at high resolution, so I can work with it. Now that I've got that script set up, all I would do is take my t-shirt image here that I've got set up here, and I'll just go and we'll turn our background back on. I'll go to image and image size. I'll bring this back down. I'm going to go to 150 dpi so it'll fit on the t-shirt tutorial, but I probably want to be at 300 and about the size of the actual t-shirt. But when I'm doing tutorials, I run at lower resolution so we don't use as much processor when we're trying to record our video. So I'll select OK. We'll bring that down and we'll go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to bring my vintage t-shirt back up and I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the images I have here and we'll minimize this also and bring this over here and all I need to do is just go ahead and left click and drag this right into my t-shirt and bring this in and you can see we've got that set up as a graphic right on our t-shirt. I can hit control T and bring this back down in size and then I could actually go and we'll apply this select apply and I'll actually come down here and I'll put a new layer in that'll be behind my background copy there and I could zoom in and we'll do that right here and then I could actually just grab a paintbrush and let's say we wanted to put some red paint here in the background here make sure we're on layer one behind our background copy and I could start to paint in some red color or add some color to this design and create a very cool colorful vintage type looking hand painted hand drawn design very quickly and of course now I've got my action saved so if I want to process this image or another image again all I would need to do I can come here to untitled which is a copy of the original go to my whiteout come down here to my actions panel and click on play selection let that process and automatically I've got another design set up but I could process all the vintage art I'd want to use a number of vintage elements, combine them on this same t-shirt, and then go and paint in them and do all kinds of artistic things with the design and be able to create a very nice looking t-shirt design or other style of design very quickly and very easily using public domain vintage style clip art. So go ahead and wrap here and go ahead and create some actions and expedite your workflow and work with some of that free vintage public domain clip art that's out there. Remember, just go to Google and do a search for vintage public domain images or vintage public domain clip art and you'll find thousands of, these, thousands of these images across the internet you can download, work with and create really nice designs with for free.